Can Boston Dynamics robots kill? Unlike most companies, Boston Dynamics has two mottos. The first one relates to the development model and goes, build it, break it, fix it. This is a great design testing methodology where you build something with very specific success requirements. It is pushed to its design limits and then beyond to see what it can really do. Sacrificial testing, or testing to destruction as some call it, is fantastic to learn real limits if you've got the budget. Little else will give you quite the same insight into capabilities. By rebuilding your creation after each iteration, you are able to eliminate flaws and enhance performance beyond your immediate need. This makes it future ready or even future proof. Their second motto addresses the point that most people have the wrong idea about robots. It reads, changing your idea of what robots can do. Too many Terminator-like movies have made people edgy about robots. They most certainly can be dangerous if mismanaged, but in and of themselves, they are not intrinsically dangerous. Do you expect your dishwasher to develop malice and try to wash and rinse you to death while you sleep? It sounds silly, but when you understand how robots work, the question makes about the same amount of sense for them. Robots lack brains, organs, and all the chemistries that give humans emotions, desires, and needs. Robots aren't biologically driven to reproduce. They aren't ambitious. They don't want or desire anything. We're halfway decent at making them appear to react somewhat like humans. But they aren't human and likely never will be. We would have to provide them with biochemistry to make them like us. And there is absolutely no reason to do that. Why make them subject to the whims of the moment? Machines need to be entirely predictable to be safe. Would you design car brakes with a maybe if I feel like it switch? Would you want your light switches to build up resentment for being shut off and maybe decide not to turn on the next time you use them? They're machines. They can be given tasks. They do not feel enslaved. They don't desire to complete tasks or not. They simply follow instructions like a robotic vacuum or robot lawnmower. Simple devices like that have rudimentary obstacle avoidance routines so they don't run over your cat or dig holes in your floor or carpet when they get stuck against a wall. And they most certainly don't resent you for programming them to do their jobs. Internet Deepfakes Now, just to put it in perspective, you should look at this entirely fake video supposedly made by Boss Town Dynamics. Some people believed this video and it went rather viral. Now, look at the CGI reveal of how it was done and understand how these videos can propagate. Most of the people that fall for these things are people that really want to be fooled, not people that give serious, critical thought to what they encounter online. Even though this could eventually have some real-world applications, unless someone invents Iron Man Tony Stark's magical arc reactor, most humaniform robots would be out of juice in an hour or less. They're not particularly practical and next to useless as soldiers in the field. As a street corner cop robot, they could stand in a charging station all day, adventuring forth to handle something and returning to the charge point to stay capable of an hour's worth of work. That could be useful until battery technology improves to the point of long duration, sophisticated operation. Boston Dynamics Principles Spun off from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology lab named LEGS in the 1990s, Boston Dynamics aims to be an ethical company. It was acquired by Hyundai Motor Group in 2021, but only after they took a pledge to maintain the guiding principles of the founders. They build trustworthy robots. They will not weaponize their robots. Any robotic use must comply with privacy and civil rights laws, and more. Good principles, among many others, meaning they will take steps to counter any militarization of their gear, preventing targeting of humans or animals, and such equipment will not invade privacy or mitigate legal rights. Will idiot militants try to subvert that? Possibly. But how hard is it for expert programmers and private developers to embed code to turn off any robot remotely? The other guys. Other companies, like Ghost Robotics, are perfectly happy to provide such equipment to the military, 
However, they stipulate that their legged robots, which do carry weapons, may not have artificial intelligence directing those weapons, are not autonomous, and must have a human operator who makes all action decisions for the device. It's a bit of a compromise, but lets them sell more machines. Ghost has also emphasized that their customers are not particularly interested in advocating for autonomous weapons systems in any case. Instead, they are looking for units to aid in chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and explosives detection, perimeter surveillance, creating wireless networks where no infrastructure exists, inspecting or survivor searching in dangerous, confined or subterranean spaces as well as reconnaissance and ordinary mapping. These capabilities are all useful to the military, even without a gun bolted on top. Wild Cards Some militaries have already presented autonomous tanks that carry weapon loads of deployable suicide drones equipped with target identification and targeting capabilities. They are equally capable of being driverless resupply vehicles to combatants. Some have presented helicopter-type drones that can deliver cargo by air, too. We don't call these robots, yet that is what they are. The main difference here is that legged robots remind humans of animal predators and are scary. If they had tracks or wings, people would not call them robots. The fact of the matter is that crews, sidewinder, javelin, m-pads, and other missile systems are robots, too. But they look different, and people simply accept them as military tools. Robocops If something were to walk on two legs, upright like a human, and be seen carrying a weapon, the fear level would probably go right off the scale. Such a machine would have ridiculously high levels of safety protocols just in order to be in public, and would be much more likely to do nothing rather than respond to only a 90% certainty level. Of course, the objective would be to keep the public safe, but it would also have to be reliable enough to keep its own operators safe. It can't simply be programmed to shoot anybody with a gun, because where does that leave police officers responding to a call, or citizens defending themselves? More importantly, however, such law enforcement units probably wouldn't even use guns, instead using non-lethal methods like tasers, tear gas, sonic and microwave weapons, or even the ability to lock together and make a walking, shape-changing, moving fence to help clear areas for security reasons. DARPA DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, was created after the launch of the Sputnik satellites in 1957 surprised the world. DARPA was created to assure that the U.S. wouldn't fall behind technologically again. It seems inevitable that they would research robots for military use, and they certainly have. But according to publicly available data, they've been focusing on sponsoring contests, inviting developers from all over the world to competitions to expand the everyday capabilities of robots. Recently, they took over a massive underground cave system. DARPA built three terrains of a subway station tunnel system, underground urban environment, and natural cave environments, and then challenged international roboticists to conquer the environment. More details of the competition are available, but clearly the emphasis is not on robot soldiers relentlessly stalking across war-torn terrain, mercilessly exterminating opposition soldiers most militaries know that the drawbacks outweigh any good that might occur from autonomous combat robots. World Militaries Any military organization is often depicted as borderline paranoid. Many have expressed interest and then invested in research into deployable autonomous robots equipped with target identification and lethal capabilities. But how reliable would they be, and would much effort be put into having very high certainty before pulling the trigger? Let's say Canada decided to invade Pennsylvania. Would such U.S. designed machines kill all the Pennsylvania Dutch farmers just to make sure it killed all of the invading Canadians? Of course, it's a silly scenario, but then it lets us ask, what are acceptable losses of citizens to thwart an invasion? And if the answer isn't zero, why not? Furthermore, we can legitimately ask, under what conditions would they be deployed? 
Would the CIA send units to take out drug lords in South America? UAV drones are already deployed, carrying weapons, and they are robots, so there is no reason to think legged units will be treated any differently. Instead, maybe we need world agreements, just like we have for chemical and biological weapons, that humaniform robots are off the table. Treads, tires, wings, or four-legged equipment carriers can continue to be used, but nothing that resembles a person. Indeed, the event that triggered all this interest in warfighting robots was the 100% real demonstration of Boston Dynamics robots dancing in unison. It was so well done that many cried CGI when they saw it, but there is no doubt that it is exactly as presented, and those syncopated robots did indeed perform to the song, Do You Love Me, Humaniform Robots. Right now in Japan, the proportion of youth is decreasing and not being replaced. As a matter of necessity, they are developing human-looking robots to be companions, particularly for the growing elderly population. This helps solve the problem of insufficient numbers of healthcare workers too. As well as human wearable exoskeletons to enhance strength for these workers, they've already got friendly panda-like robots. Both of these techniques and devices assist people in hospitals, preventing injuries to workers trying to lift patients in and out of beds, baths, wheelchairs, x-ray machines, and so on. They look like happy pandas, because that is not frightening to those with Alzheimer's disease, and the large plastic surfaces are easy to sterilize. But is that all that is happening? Marrying robots. Now the Japanese are developing robots that fulfill the function of a life partner. Yes, in that way. Of course, we always knew this would happen when the technology became available. People like to have intimate relations, even if they don't have an actual spouse or partner. Interestingly, these robot partners will also be capable of contributing to daily housework, too. Apparently, it's not a one-trick pony but verging on real companionship with conversations and cooperative efforts. How long until someone makes it official with a marriage ceremony of some kind? The most important thing to remember is that artificial intelligence can be given tasks and goals, but it has no wants, it has no needs, emotions, or desires. It has no ambition to compete with humans. That is the realm of Hollywood and science fiction not reality. Don't fear robots, whether they have real AI or just run on excellent emulation programming. If you want to be concerned about something, worry about foolish humans telling robots to do violent things on their behalf. Robots will do what they're told to do. If we tell them to take care of us and keep us safe, they'll do that. Conversely, they'll kill all humans if instructed to do so by stupid humans. As long as we're smart enough not to elect sociopaths into leadership positions, the future is only likely to improve with the addition of robots in everyday life.